done horrible things. So is everybody. Shit happens. Get the whiskey. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my... So, what happens when seven strangers meet at a motel? Do they all kill each other violently? Or do they sit quietly in a circle eating s'mores playing tic-tac-toe? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Bad Times at the El Royale. I really do appreciate it. Now, this film, Bad Times at the El Royale, is written and directed by Drew Goddard. If you don't know Drew Goddard, know him now. He directed an episode or two or was behind a lot of the Daredevil franchise and he did a pretty decent job to me. He also did Cabin in the Woods that came out in 2012 and that's pretty much all he's ever done. Uh, he's produced a number of other films and, you know, mostly wrote, but as far as directing that, you know, that is pretty much all he's done. Now, um, this film has a pretty interesting cast. We have Jeff Bridges, uh, Cynthia Arrivo, what I'll come to in a second, uh, Dakota Johnson, John Hamm, Chris Hemsworth, uh, Lewis Pullman and a number of other people that you may or may not have heard of. Now, I said that I would come back to Cynthia Revo. She did a great job in this film right here, but I just have to go ahead and note that I am really not happy with her casting on the upcoming Harriet movie uh, about Harriet Tubman, a black American. Um, this lady is a great actress, as we saw in this film right here, but she is not a black American. I just have to go ahead and say that. Um, but now that we have that out the way, she was actually the better part of this film to me. She had the best performance. She was very convincing. Um, she was actually, actually very nice to look at too. Um, you know, during certain scenes. So I really do liked her. Uh, I really do liked her. I can't even talk. I'll go ahead and get one of the main things that I could not stand about this film. And my goodness gracious, this film was too damn long. Golly, I wanted to leave like 17 times. I looked at my clock like three times. That is just not a rule. Like, Brandon, never look at your clock. Never look at your phone. And I don't like even like pulling out my phone anyway because I don't want to disturb people. But I had to put it in my shirt and look. But this film took forever to end. Like, seriously, I thought this thing was going to end so many times, but it didn't. Okay. It's coming in at two hours and 21 minutes. It felt like four hours and 30 minutes. Like, seriously. But what the film is about is you have these seven strangers, and this takes place in the late 60s. You have these seven strangers that meet at this hotel, and they all have their own little story, and they're trying to get away from something or just, you know, you know, get to the next level in life, and everything just kind of clashes here at this hotel. Is this hotel haunted? Is there something special going on? I don't know. You'll just have to see it for yourself. I'll just say that it's not a normal hotel or motel. It's not a typical hotel or motel. And what I will say that's great about the film with Drew Drew Goddard did is how he tied all the pieces together. I mean, he split this film up in chapters um, and, you know, he gave you a different perspective of each character. I mean, you know, you kind of get to see them coming in together, but then he takes his time and he gives you each of their perspective. And the way he does it was kind of like a play. And then he brings it all together. I will applaud him on that. But each damn chapter was too damn drawn out. And these characters, I don't care about them enough to sit there as long as we had to. And what this film reminds me of is a failed attempt of a, not Clint Eastwood, but uh, Quentin Tarantino. The whole time I was watching this film, I was like, this feels like a cheap Quentin Tarantino ripoff. Because the thing about Quentin Tarantino's films, they are long and they are drawn out, but they always pay off. And not only do they pay off in the end, but they pay off in the middle of the movie because there may not be anything going on in the Quentin Tarantino movie. But I will, but you, you'll be hard to convince me otherwise. But Quentin Tarantino's dialogue is always as powerful. Like he has the most interesting dialogue in the land. This film would have worked for me bad times at the air war. Yeah, but it's, they ain't saying nothing. I'm just like, okay, can we, can we get it? Can we get it going here? And just another thing that just describes about this film and mom, if you're watching this, you may want to, you know, turn it off or whatever for a little bit. If you put your little boys and girls away, but this is what this film reminded me of, especially towards the end of the third act. Imagine 
not the best sex in the world, but just some good sex. Not the best, but it's good. You enjoying yourself. You want it to last. Uh, you, you want it to last. You having a good time or whatever. And right as you're about to climax or whatever and get that good old orgasm, somebody busts in the room. But like, hey, before you have that good orgasm, let me take you over here to this. I'm spitting. Let me take you to this room over here and teach you the science and the mechanics behind the orgasm and how the body works and how everything is going on the inside. And you were like, first you probably be like, what the hell are you doing in here? But second you be like, no, I'm good. I'd rather just finish. Okay, please leave. And then you're trying to finish. Then they leave or whatever. And then you got to work yourself back up and whatever. you like, ah, 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 ah. And right when you finish, he busts back. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Before you have that good old orgasm, I just got this other thing that I want to show you or whatever. I know you're having a good time right now. I know you was close, but please trust me. Let me just show you over here. Let me teach you why you're so excited right now or whatever and why you're about to have this good feeling right here. And you're just like, no, leave me the hell alone. I'm good. I just want to finish. That's what this movie kept doing like three times in a row. You have this long two hour plus movie or whatever. And then finally, when things are coming together, when they're coming to fruition when they're about to pay off the film keeps want to stop and tell you more story and i'm like no you've already told me enough story i don't care anymore i just want to see what happens i just want to know the ending of this thing how are these characters going to get out of this situation because it looks like this person this person gonna die you don't want them to die how the hell are they going to get this but you keep having these extra scenes coming in and it's just so out of place it's so out of order it's just so drawn out. i'm just like oh my gosh Please hurry up, please hurry up, please hurry up. But it's just like, the, the setup of the film is good. The characters are decent, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you do care about maybe one or two of them, but not all of them. But man, it's, this was just too long. This film could have worked easily at like an hour and 45 minutes. But for them to draw it out this long, they, it, I was ready to go. I was ready to go. I was ready to go. Is there anything else that I want to talk about about this film? Nope. I, the, Chris Hemsworth is a maniac. Um, you know, all the ladies will love him. You'll have to see why. But... Uh, I don't know, man. It, it was a it was a nice setup, and I like. I, okay, so let's just sum it up real quick. It was a nice setup. I like the concept of the El Royal Hotel. I like the slight suspense, and you really not knowing what's going on, and who you can trust, and who you can't trust. But at the same time, the film was boring. It was too damn long, and it was out of order. That third act, when they kept teasing you like this, it, it, it was just frustrating beyond belief. If I had to rate. Uh, what is this movie called? I don't remember. Bad Times at the L Royale out of a 1 out of 10. And I've been kind of going back and forth with this one. I'm going to give it a 6 point. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Yes. A 6.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Bad Times at the Air Royale or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. But if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review slash re uh not reaction my opinion slash review for bad times at the lyl please help me reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and before you go don't forget that my name is brennan heath avery and that's just my opinion peace